today I'm going to talk about transmission lines. And then transmission lines typically build up out of four components. We have a resistor, we have an inductance, an L, there's a conductance, a J, G, and there's a capacitance, C. And these four, four components are being re repeated over and over again and going to the right. Yeah, and these are very small values because it's not just the normal resistors R, but it's R delta X, and delta X will go to zero, as we will see later. Yeah, so how do you calculate the impedance of a circuit like that? That's what we want to do today. So let's see what the voltage difference will result in between this point and the next point in the node, right? So you start at point X and you want to go to point X plus delta X and you want to see what the resistance is and or the, the impedance is of that, that little circuit. And we can come up with the following equations. Uxt, voltage here, minus Ux plus delta Xt, that's the voltage there, equals the current I through the resistor, R delta X, so that's a voltage drop there, plus the voltage drop of the inductance. Yeah, and that's L delta X di dt. The voltage on an inductance like this is always L di dt. The current through a capacitor is always like C D U C D T. Yeah, voltage over it differentiated uh, with respect to time. Okay, we have this first equation. Now we're gonna divide left and right by delta X and we, we are gonna take the limit. So we divide left and right by delta X. The delta X is disappear on the right hand side. On the left hand side, you get this. And if you look caref carefully, this really is a differentiation with respect to x and that's what you see here but with a minus sign because usually you start with ux plus delta x minus ux and here it's the other way around so a minus sign will occur and i opted to put the minus sign on the right hand side here which is allowed yeah and this is just repeated over here so this is our first partial differential equation. Why is it a partial differential equation? Well, u doesn't only depend on x, but also on t. So there are multiple variables in the equation. Okay, we do the same for i. We have a current i xt here, and we have a current i x plus delta xt there. So the difference between those currents is essentially the, the current that goes in here and in here which is u, x plus delta x, t times g times delta x over the uh, conductance. And then over the capacitor, we have a, uh, a current c delta x dux dt. Yeah? So the current through the conductor is this, and the current through the capacitor is this. Again, left and right will be divided by delta x. And we take the limit on the left and on the right hand side. And if you do that carefully, you get another differential equation, which looks like this. Dixt dx equals minus uxt times g plus c dux dt. Okay. Now, for simplicity, I copied those over here. So you, again, you have those two equations. And what we're now going to do is we're going to separate out the time. So we want to go from a partial differential equation to essentially a differential equation, just depending on x. And we do that through the following uh, assumptions. Ixt equals i hat x times e to the power j omega t. And we do the same for u. u hat times e to the power j omega t. Yeah. And we fill them out in this one and this one. We start with the first one. We fill out this on the left. And this on the right and the only interesting thing that happens is if you differentiate i with respect to t you get a j omega out and that's what you see here yeah and you get e to the power j omegas everywhere since you get them everywhere you can take them out left and right and you will end up with this differential equation yeah this is a partial differential equation although now it's a differential equation because it only depends on x in this case now you do the same with i, with this equation, you fill this one out, 
you can go this way the only interesting part again is if you differentiate u with respect to t you get a j omega out which you see here so you get g j omega c u at x e to the power j omega t again left and right you can take the g uh, e to the power j omega t's out and you're left with this differential equation di hat <coughs> dx equals minus ux hat g plus j omega c yeah now again i copied them for simplicity so we can see where we're left here these are the two we derived but if you look carefully you can see that these equations depend on each other yeah they are linked differential equations which is always very very inconvenient and hard to solve and we want to get rid of that so what we do is we differentiate du dx one more time to x over here and then on the right hand side you also have to differentiate towards x so you get minus dy dx times r plus j omega l this stuff does not depend on x so that is just copied and now you see that you can use this equation filled out in here to get something that depends on u only and we do that here yeah so now you have a second order differential equation this one is folded in here and you get your only ux dependency plus this term which we call minus gamma squared yeah we do the same for i we differentiate i one more time towards x then you get a du dx here you fill this one in there and you get an equation that just depends on i also a second order equation looks exactly the same as the other one yeah with gamma defined as such and the result is that we now have two differential equations and these are linear differential equations second order differential equations in u and in i and we know those solutions are this so u at u hat x equals u minus we will see later why i call that u minus e to the power j gamma x plus u plus e to the power minus j gamma x and you have a similar uh, function for i x yeah i hat okay so now we have these two equations that we just derived and we also derive these equations and what we're now going to do is we're going to try to express ui and u plus or i rather i minus and i plus in u minus and u plus because these are uh, constants we don't know what these constants are yet so we need to try to derive those we do that by differentiating this function towards x du dx we get j comma in front because of this right there's an x there with u minus e to the power j gamma x and here you get the minus j comma in front right u plus e to the power minus j comma x and du dx as we see here is minus i times r plus j omega l the minus i is this one so we can say minus i we fill that out times r plus j omega l yeah and now we're going to compare exponents so this needs to be exactly the same as this and this needs to be exactly the same as this piece so what we will get is u minus times j gamma needs to be equal to minus i minus r plus j omega l yeah and something similar a minus u plus j gamma here needs to be identical to minus i plus r plus j omega l yeah so now there's a relationship between i's and u's and if you use that in this equation you can write it out and you get i hat equals this there's an u minus now plus some sort of number times e to the power j comma x and there's a u plus with the same number with an e minus j comma x so let's now define z the impedance of the circuit so if i look inside to the left or to the right you will see impedance and you can define that as u minus divided by i minus u over i or minus u plus divided by i plus and if you do that and you can see that immediately here for instance u minus divided by i minus here is nothing more than minus r plus j omega l divided by j gamma here yeah and if you work that out you will get this 
and this is the impedance of a transmission line r plus j omega l over g plus j omega c so what you can see is if you have a very high quality transmission line where r is almost zero and g is almost zero you will get l over c as the characteristic impedance and the square root of l over c as the characteristic impedance of a transmission line an ideal transmission line yeah now we use these uh, values of z this value of c to write out and simplify this equation so we get i hat x equals u minus over c times e to the power j comma x minus u plus over c right because this is one over c essentially as you can see e to the power minus j gamma x okay and what we now like to do as a last step is we would like to bring back the whole formula what is uxt because as we know u didn't only depend on x the u hat does but not the u it also depends on t so you can recover or recuperate this by just multiplying it back according to the definition that we stated before u hat x times e to the power j omega t and if you do that you get u minus e to the power j omega t plus comma x and there is an omega t minus comma x and you can do the same for a y for i yeah so this gives you the total current over time and the total current over time and the total voltage over time and as you look carefully you might recognize this you might recognize omega t minus gamma x as a wave so this is a wave uh, going to the right and this is a wave going to the left and that's why i call this a u plus because it's going to the right and this is what well, a u minus so it's going to the left so that's why it's a minus the way you can see that this wave is going to the right is let's take a constant angle because e to the power j this is an angle phi you make this constant you increase t if you want to keep this constant x needs to increase also so if t increases x increases right so it's going more to the right if t goes up in value if the time goes up in value and that's why this wave is going to the right and this wave is going to the left so what we calculated now is we calculated the voltage xt so on every position x you can figure out what the voltage should be we calculated the i the current and we calculated z right we did that in our previous slide so we calculated z here and c is r plus j omega l divided by g plus j omega c square root of that okay so i feel this is a great place to stop if you like this video please subscribe and please like and i'll